today's video we'll be working on my 2016 Ram 1500. About nine months ago I put up a video of me installing this eBay off-road winch bumper. Well this bumper came with some LED pod lights and some flush mounted pod lights as well. The problem with these is they feel kind of cheap and they're technically not road legal. Reason for that is these are more of a floodlight rather than an SAE approved light but we'll get into that here in a bit. So I'm pretty psyched about this video because LastFit actually reached out to me regarding some exciting stuff that's hopeful to come to this channel as well as their product line. For them to reach out to an average guy like me with a relatively small following, that's pretty cool of them. All right, so this brand, LastFit. I've used their products in the past before, mainly LED bulbs, which by the way have been awesome on both my Lexus LX470 build as well as my wife's 2015 Ford Explorer. They offered to send out some LastFit love for me to showcase and give an honest opinion on them. I brought up my Ram 1500 and told them about how I miss having legal fog lights as well as how I hate being that jerk on the road driving with some super bright LED pods. It was at last fit that actually informed me of SAE approved fog lights. And after showing them a picture of my truck, they even offered to send a light bar to complete the look of this off-road bumper. All right, so before I get into this video, what I mean by SAE approved pod lights is that these are pod lights that meet the standards and requirements to be able to operate them in normal driving conditions without being that jerk blinding people or simply getting a ticket. This is the plan. We'll do a small unboxing video of the products that we received from last fit. We'll do a small comparison of what I was running before versus the new stuff. And we'll show you guys how I get this installed on my Ram 1500. Now, I won't get too technical with their products. However, what I'll do is I'll include links to them in the description down below. LastFit actually does a pretty good job covering all their specifications on their website. We'll go ahead and take that off. Get that out of the way. You'll see your two pod lights. There's a little box with accessories. And over here is a little like manual. It basically has marked off the type of lights that you should be expecting in your packaging. So you can see it's got checked off SAE, SAE. It's got the different type of lights should you be shopping for different pod lights. So it tells you kind of like the pattern of the lighting and all that. And move this out of the way. So obviously they come in a pair. I will say these do feel really premium compared to the LED pods that came with my bumper. And it's got the yellow tint, just what I was looking for. It's got last fit etched on the bottom over there. Over here we've got some brackets. This stuff is all tightly packaged pretty well. Looks like your C brackets that go on the outside and then you mount them to your bumper. Okay. One thing I do want to point out about these pod lights is that the wiring harness slash connector that they come with, they feel really premium, feel very rugged. The waterproofing and sheathing on the, the wiring just it won't disappoint. Right, sorry guys, I'm not that technical when it comes to describing things, but you kind of get what I'm trying to say. All right. So in this box, you've got some hardware for the brackets. So you've got one for each. So total of two. And then you've got like a piggy harness. What I'm planning to do is splice into them right here. That way I could just connect this straight into this and I could maintain that waterproofing feature. What else is in here? Another piggy tail. Uh, looks like that is it. Next item on the menu is our 20 inch LED bar. Technically 22 inch as the mounting of the outside brackets, but it is marketed as a 20 inch light bar. All right. Let's get this open. Again, pretty well packaged. None of the boxes got damaged or anything like that. It looks like it's a single row LED bar. I've never actually had one of these before. I've had like the double row or whatever they're called. Now, these aren't road legal, by the way. Pretty cool last fit to include this. There's the LED bar. It's got last fit on it, all obviously. Your gills on the back or whatever, the cooling gills. It looks like that's some sort of breather or something. I'm guessing that's what that is. And then how this is going to mount on my bumper, and you guys are going to see it's going to mount on the outside of brackets. I might not even need some of these hardware, maybe just like the screws and bolts or whatnot. In the box comes two other boxes labeled side brackets and bottom brackets. So I'm guessing if you wanted to mount it either where you have hardware coming from the bottom or hardware coming from the sides. So I kind of wanted to uh, see how the wiring or harnesses are I'm not sure the length you've got your relay 
you've got your fuse coming off the battery terminal. And I mean, just looking at, I, I tend to look at this kind of stuff where just looking at the crimping and seems pretty long. And this comes apart, I'm guessing, just for the purpose of running the wiring. All right, two female connectors over here. And it looks like all your last fit LED lighting has these standard male connectors and they all just latch on. Yeah, you hear a click and that just, that feels solid. I'm not gonna lie, that's, that feels great. You just feel them just gripping down and getting that watertight seal. We have a on off switch and it looks like it, it comes with a LED indicator. But what I have is our jump pack hooked up to the cheap LED pod and we're gonna have it going up against the side of my brother's place here. So if you look at that, so that's that's how the LED pod is, the one that's on the truck right now. So if you look, it's just a dispersion of light. If you're driving in front of that, that's just gonna blind you out. So next we have the SAE fog light. So if you look at that, it's more directed. It's not a dispersion. It's not like a crazy dispersion of light. It's more of uh, a beam. So if you're driving in front of that and I have these face down or away from you, that's not gonna get in your eyes like the other one is. So next we have the LED bar. Again, this is a single row LED bar and man, this thing is bright. Just look at that. So again, this one is an SAE approved. This is an off-road light. The light uh, dispersion is similar to the LED pod uh, that came with the bumper. So just imagine driving with these. This is a way better upgrade than what I'm working with right now. That's just too bright. In person, this is just blinding me, right? This is more of a horizontal uh, light and they pretty much got rid of like the vertical. So like any beam that comes up this way or beam that comes down this way, basically the lighting that, that would blind other people in front of you. Uh, they've got it controlled in that horizontal lighting but you can see that how like it's it's a horizontal light it doesn't go like crazy above whereas this one is just just everywhere right like you can just see how the blue kind of goes up there where the yellow one is kind of controlled down here the one side was you know pretty much my test fitting and stuff there is some cutting involved that's why i went ahead and did it on the one side first now i'll go ahead and show you guys how i did that on this side it's really not that bad i don't mind cutting into the bumper to be able to make those work because personally i love the way that looks right now i do offer this with the the white led i chose to go with the yellow because here in michigan it does snow and we do get a lot of fog and from what i heard and from what i you know from some of the research that i've done online the yellow does a lot better well the yellow tint does a lot better in those conditions having too much of that white led can cause less visual while driving during like snowstorms or heavy rain and fog but uh yeah I, I decided to go with the yellow tinted fog light versus the white all right so in my case i want to go ahead and get this led pod light out well now we're going to go ahead and remove this 13 mil all right slide this back or forward so we'll go ahead and remove that so i'm going to come in with a sawzall I cut up to here right and then i'll either go across or push the metal up and then on this side, we'll make the same cut. So we're going to cut all this out, right? And then push either, either push this up or we can make a horizontal cut and just get rid of the whole top part. We just need to clear the whole top part just to be able to fit the new LED pod lights. But I wanted to show you guys the, the size difference and why we have to make some cuts to the bumper. If you look over here, so we've got, if we line up the top with the top and then you come to the bottom, we're looking at maybe what, like a few millimeters maybe like a quarter of an inch. So we do need to make a cut to make that work. As far as comparison side to side, or like width, width wise, it looks like it's slightly bigger, but not by that much. Anyways, uh, the width, we do have some slack on the, on the front. So I don't think we'll need to make any crazy cuts for the width. Provide you with a baggie of hardware for each, for each pod light. And then there is also an Allen wrench. I, do have that up front let's see so this is a 14 mil bolt that's gonna go in there and you don't have to put a washer or anything like that because uh, if you see it's got those those stoppers on both sides so when you go to screw on your your nut and your washer and your lock washer you can uh, hold that in place and uh, be able to tighten that up the small stuff how we're gonna do it is it's gonna go on the side of it so i did bolts 
lock washer, flat washer. All right, and then this can get a little tricky. For my application, I'm gonna go ahead and install it this way. When I fish this through this bracket, I'm also gonna put a washer here, right? And then we're gonna do the same thing on both ends. So for the one side, it should be a little easy to fish. Can you kind of bend that bracket back a little bit? Uh, find the hole. And then you always want to thread them by hand. Make that a good habit. Okay. I'll just kind of find that hole. Okay, that wasn't too bad. All right, now we won't tighten this right away. We'll do a hand tight just so it can kind of stay in place because we do want to adjust our beam after we get this installed. A good quality hacksaw with a good quality blade. I'm pretty sure you could go to Harbor Freight and grab yourself. I'm just like a cheap hacksaw and make this work, but I personally love this tool. In this corner, we're gonna go ahead and run a cut along this way, right? And then we're gonna come up over here and we're just gonna guide it up, cut up to here. Just try, just careful not to hit this part, the front part. So we've got our first cut right there and I know it's not completely straight, but we've got that cut and then I went ahead and did this cut and then I stopped right up at this uh, upper fascia part. And then our third cut, I just went across like here and what that did is it gave me a small like a piece of metal that I could bend back easily versus trying to bend back this whole piece. What that allows me to do is now I have space for my blade to come in horizontally. I could come in with my blade and just go across this whole cut either that or i could just you know make one more cut in the middle right here and just hammer this piece in then hammer that piece in it's easier to cut this into sections and then hammer it in versus trying to hammer the whole thing in I did cut a little extra just because the mounting bolt on the side right here was hitting up against this wall. So this kind of comes out like up to here. You can kind of see how much of it I cut off. So I just went down with, with the saw, went down like that, and then just cut down this way. So the next thing we're going to do, because this is steel, we'll use some like undercoating paint and spray all the bare metal. Well, first off, I'm going to clean up the cuts a little bit, get some of the burring off and whatnot. And then we'll go ahead and spray this stuff pretty generously. This is the price I pay to try to make this work for you guys. So I hacked it up a little bit more than I would have liked to. Like I made the cut on the bottom, but found out that was pretty much unnecessary. All you need to do is really clear out space up top. This pod light comes as is. It already has a male connector to it. They also include two like piggy tail harnesses. So this is the female end that will, you know, that would connect to this a harness demonstration reasons i have the i have the 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 stock 9006 on the passenger side right so the stock fog light or the stock light bulb is a 9006 so basically what i'm doing is i'm replacing this with this right so i can go ahead and insert a link in the description down below to mail ends for a 9006 so that you don't have to splice into your stock harness so you don't have to you know clip off the female end of the the harness and your truck you can go ahead and just buy some of these and then wire them up to to here fyi for the ram 1500 the ground is obviously the black wire so both both sides of my truck the ground is black wire and then the the power is a combination of white and some other color and for leds you have to keep the polarity where it's positive where power is power and negative is negative black wire goes to the black wire power goes to the red wire the other option let's say you don't have a stock harness or you're gonna run like a manual switch on your own. Do like the male and female like butt connectors and I can insert a link in the description down below to these. So I just wanted to show you how I do this. So with these connectors, 
we're, with this wire, we're gonna go ahead and expose just a little bit more. You just need some wire strippers. And then we'll twist it up a little bit. And if you have a, like a soldering kit at home, if you wanna run just some solder on here, that's always a good precaution. So we're gonna go ahead and put this end. Let's see. What I'm gonna do is while I'm holding this in place, make sure I see the wire in there. We're going to grab our, our uh, crimper. And what we want is we want this divot, right? We want this divot on the back of this this male connector. And the reason, so this is the front because there's two, like you could see the the metal where it's it's kind of like this, right? So I'm gonna put that there. Remember, there we are. And then we'll just squeeze it. All right. And then you can kind of see where the divot went on the back over here. And now this is nice and snug. So you can try tugging on it, it's not going anywhere. So this is the one end that's for the passenger side. You can see this is the stock uh, harness that goes to the 9006 bulb. But in our case, we're going to have it going to this uh, connector. And the reason I'm actually missing a connector on this end is because this truck was actually in an accident at one point in its life and the harness uh, lost the connector on this side. I just wanna show you your options. There's probably better ways to do this, but this is what I have and this is how I'm gonna make it work. I'm gonna go ahead and get, grab some electrical tape and I'm gonna seal this all up pretty good. Don't want water getting into the wiring here because it'll eventually corrode the wiring and then give you electrical issues or have your stuff not work. All right, so now that our wiring is done, we're gonna go ahead and get the hardware mounted up to the bumper. Once this is mounted, since I can't really reach this side, uh, I went ahead and tightened this up pretty good on this side. So this is going to be the side that's gonna be like that once it's mounted in there. I'll go ahead and tighten this up once I uh, line it up because once this is in there, I have access to this bolt, but I don't have access to this one. And then what I'm doing over here is I've got our 14 mil ran through like that. And then I've got one lock washer on the bottom. We're gonna get that in the, the bracket right there. And then underneath it, we're gonna have a flat washer first so we're gonna have flat washer first lock washer and then our nut and then um, go ahead and secure it with a 14 mil so you'll only need one 14 mil because on the side this bracket's already holding the, the head of this bolt all right guys so i've got both of them installed i still need to tie up the hardware on uh, the passenger side I do have everything tied up on the driver's side. I'll show you what I'm doing as far as alignment goes. You see right here, my driver's side is a little bit higher than the passenger side. Well, I'm probably about a good maybe 10 or 12 feet. Anyways, uh, that's probably about two feet up from the ground. So like these are my headlights. So you see where my headlight line is. And then that's my fog light. So I figured I'd just kind of try to fill in that gap of light right there. If that makes sense, just for now. And then when it gets dark out and I go drive, then I could readjust depending on uh, how I want these aligned. Let's go ahead and bring our passenger side up here. I only tightened up the one bolt on one side so I could still kind of maneuver it right there. Right now they're both aligned and I'll go ahead and tighten up the bolts on both sides. Whenever you're lining up like headlights or lights, if you, you know, if you're looking at it from like this height, maybe like this height right here and you're not getting blinded, then that means you're in good, you're in a good standing point. It's, it's about like when you start going down here and then you see what I mean. So that, that's why whenever like people are coming at you like from like uphill, they're coming at you and you can kind of see their lights are like that blinding you out. That's just because of the way they have their headlights or lights uh, aligned. So, so it's right here is where it kind of blinds you. And then let's see if the, the fog lights. So it's like at that point where it tends to blind you. So. You know, nobody's gonna be driving this low uh, unless I'm coming up like up a hill. Yeah, just wanna show you guys what I'm doing here. So here's the finished product. We've got our fog lights installed, hardware tightened up, wiring is all hidden away. I figured I went ahead and installed the LED bar. It was pretty straightforward, so I didn't even bother recording it. To install the LED bar, just make sure you use the box that's labeled uh, side brackets. And really all you need is just the Let's see if we can see it. Just the Allen wrench bolt, use that, a lock washer after it, and then a flat washer. And that goes straight into the 
the LED bar. You go ahead and tie it up on this side and then tighten it up on that side and then just get it where you want it. <clears throat> to run the wiring was pretty straightforward. I already had a harness in here previously. So I basically, I ripped that one out because it actually went bad because due to it not having any waterproofing, uh, water got in there and looks like my, uh, my breaker here went out. So you've got your relay. You've got these two wires that go to the terminals. The positive, you just go ahead and undo this 10 mil right here and then put the positive on there, redo the 10 mil. On this side, for the negative, there's a 13 mil a nut. Just take that off, put this wire, and then go ahead and re-secure that. To get the switch into the truck, you just gotta, if you look over here, there's a rubber boot. So right behind this brake booster, so this, this is the brake booster, uh, there's a rubber boot over here. So you're actually, there's actually two layers of it, right? You gotta get, you gotta pry off this part right here. So you see the, the rubber boot with the yellow marking? You just you pry that off and then move it out of the way. And then there's a, another rubber boot on the inside. Uh, what you do is you just take like a long flathead screwdriver and literally just stab through it all the way into the cab. Once you get a hole in that rubber boot, that's directly in the cab. You're in the cab after that point. So to feed that in, super easy. You literally, literally take your finger along with the end of this wire. Where's it? This wire right here. And you just, you feed it through. And then how it looks on this side, excuse the mess so once you feed it through that's the rubber boot right there and then uh, for the switch so you can undo this before you actually run this through the boot and then for the switch what I did was I have it installed right here uh, double sided tape make sure you clean this off tape this down uh, and then you just you feed this wire underneath the steering wheel you could bring the steering wheel up or down so underneath the steering wheel and then once you let the wire drop you can kind of like fish for it with your fingers and then uh, i'll probably you know find a way to better secure this We've got our harness right here going down i don't know if you can see it you just want to make sure you're avoiding stuff like you know the fan obviously well the fan or anything that's hot so the radiator could get hot uh <clears throat> You just you know like i said just run it here let's see if we could run it down let's see if we could see how we ran the wiring uh, it's kind of hard so you know i've got it over here so this is the other end of it and then i've already got everything zip tied up and neat i need to figure out a way to keep it mounted up especially once i get the winch mounted um, so the connector for the LED bar, I just have it coming off the bar and then I just have it kind of tucked away over here behind this bull bar and then it's going behind this bumper. So it's in between the grill and the bumper, just goes to the back, hooked up to that harness and then I also uh, took the other end of that harness and spliced into it and got these two uh, pods connected in. Let's get everything turned on and uh, show you what it looks like with the whole setup on. All right, moment of truth. So we've got all the lights on. Wow, that bar is super bright. Holy crap. All right. So without the bar, you know what? Let me let me turn that bar off. So here's the end result as far as our fog lights and headlights and check out the grill and whatnot. So we're going to go ahead and turn on our lights. This is with both fog lights and headlights on. And then this is with our LED bar and those little two pod lights on the bottom. The little two pod lights on the bottom pretty much aren't doing much compared to the bar. Let's show you what it looks like with just headlights and no fog lights. So there's that, fog lights. I'm actually really stoked to see what these look like when we get snowstorms here in Michigan or when it's like raining heavily or fog and whatnot. Let me show you what it looks like with just the LED bar. Man, that thing is bright. There's a high beams. <laughs> high beams don't have anything in them. And that's with everything on. Turn that off. All right, let's do a walk around.
All right, guys, so that pretty much wraps up the video. Again, huge shout out to Last Fit for giving me this opportunity. Go ahead, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It motivates me to do more of this kind of content. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and drop them down below. Again, I'm gonna insert all the links in the description down below, helpful links uh, to today's video. Let's move on to B-roll and we'll see you in the next video. Wow.